Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting After Effects tutorial. Today, we're gonna take a look at creating some cool 3D volumetric light inside of After Effects. So, let's take a look at a few different examples. So, in this example, we have a cell phone that's projecting all of this light. This is actually a prototype for the new iPhone. It has a laser and it can project light and cut through steel, a bunch of cool stuff. We've got some light rays coming through a window. And you can tell this is all three-dimensional and I've actually done a 3D camera track to get this to work right. We also have a few examples with uh, just some title designs and uh, some smoke. And of course the primary design here with uh, just some light rays coming through a title. This technique was also used on the Star Trek Into Darkness title sequence that we helped out with. And uh, we can kind of see right here the light shining through. Now, the best part of this technique is that it's super easy to do. And uh, let's jump right in. Now, you may have seen our recent blog show where we talk about creating some volumetric with a smoke machine and some stencils. So check that out for some cool practical effects. But today, we're gonna create this effect in After Effects without any third-party plugins. All right, let's go and get started. We're gonna create a new composition and uh, we'll do 1280 by 720 and maybe 500 frames. And we'll hit okay. Then let's take the text tool and uh, we'll go ahead and type in here light and uh, we can pretty much use any font this looks good now I want to center it pretty well and then we're gonna pre-compose it so I'll choose layer pre-compose it might be off the screen there and we'll call this title and let's also change the comp name to volume light and we'll hit OK let's go and make another solid this time we'll make it uh, kind of gray and this we'll call the floor. And we'll make it a 3D layer. So toggle the switches, 3D layer. And we'll also make the title a 3D layer. And we'll take the floor, hit the W key, and we're going to rotate this and move it down right below the title. And then we can actually hit S and scale it up. All right, stay with me. I know this is some advanced stuff. Let's also create a camera. And we'll do, you know, 28 millimeter. Take the orbit tool and we can kind of see 3D. Yes. Let's put the title above the floor and let's also create a black solid background. So this will leave as a 2D layer. We'll call this uh, background. Now let's go ahead and add a light. This time we'll do a point light, cast shadows, and hit OK. And we want to push this light into Z space behind the title. Move it up a little bit. And let's go to the title, hit AA. And that brings up the material options. And let's turn on cast shadows. So now we can kind of see this is starting to work. So we'll take our light, hit T, increase the intensity a bit. There we go. We can also hit AA and we can change the diffusion of the light so we can soften that shadow a bit. Now, I may also go into the render options and limit the resolution of this to say 500. And it'll make it a little lower quality, but also render a touch faster. So let's soften this a bit more. All right, so now let's go and create our volumetric light. I'm gonna come over here to layer new solid and we'll make a white solid and we'll call this light source and hit OK. Then I'm going to take the ellipse tool and draw a small circle. So if you hold down control alt shift perfect circle. Let's make it a 3D layer and let's also hit AA and turn off accept lights and that way it won't be affected by the lighting it won't cast shadows that's also off. So now let's move it back into 3D space all right, so here's how we add our volumetric light. We're going to create a new adjustment layer. And we'll call this volume light. Let's come over here to the effects and presets and type in radial fast blur. 
and let's drag that out onto our volume light. So let's set the zoom to brightest and turn up the amount. So right away we kind of have the basic idea. Now the truth is it's actually a 2D effect. I just say it's 3D just so that I can get more hits and uh, more views and all that stuff. So have you ever clicked on a video expecting to see something specific and then some crappy video with like a million dislikes? Anyway, I invented that. I keep telling myself I should make good videos, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, okay, so we've got the basic light effect. Now to make it look 3D, what we want to do is create a new null object. And we want the null object to be a 3D point. So we'll call this point. And it's important that this point, let's just make it yellow, is pushed back in Z space as well. So we want to push it back behind our white light. Now keep in mind that this volumetric light is not working right now. So what we want to do is take our volume light radial fast blur effect and we're going to add an expression to the center. We're going to alt click on the stopwatch and then we're going to take the pick whip and select that point layer that we just created. Now before you hit anything we're going to type in a quick expression. It's dot to comp parentheses, bracket, 0, 0, 0, end bracket, and end parentheses. Now, you guys are probably thinking, wow, how does he know this offhand? He's so smart and good looking. Well, actually, I just have it typed up off screen here, so. Yeah. Now, this expression basically turns that 3D point into a 2D position for the radial fast blur effect. There's one last thing that we have to do. We need to come over here to the effects choose color correction curves and let's put this before the radial fast blur and what we want to do is compress the range so that we only see the bright pixels so this is actually going to compress it we could also use levels but you know how I feel about that so now if we take the camera tool and move this around we have some volumetric looking light now one small problem we can't see anything else well Here's the cool trick. If we take that layer, set it to screen, we've now composited that light back over the top of our title. So we can increase the amount. We can even add some color correction now. So we could come in here, say, go to the red channel. We could boost up the blue here. And we've created this nice looking volume light effect. So now we'll get into polishing this a little bit more, but let me show you a few ways to control this. So if we take that point that we created, okay, by moving the position of this point, so we can bring it closer, which will make the beam wider, or we can push it really far away to make the beam tighter. And this will also affect how it looks when the camera goes from side to side. So it'll swoop past a little bit faster and uh, that looks pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and polish this effect a little bit more. Okay, so let's go and add a fractal noise. So we'll add a new solid, call this fractal noise, and we'll come over here and type in fractal noise and drop that out here. So we'll try to do this manually. Let's do dynamic and uh, soft linear looks good. And then let's go to the sub settings and play with this rotation. I want this to kind of look really tenderly and fiery almost. And that looks pretty good. Then we're going to come over here, add a ellipse tool. We're going to just create a little bit of a circle here. Hit F and feather it out a bit. Now here is my fractal noise trick. So I want this to be very fiery. Uh, but the only problem is it's got transparency and there's some weird issues. So let's go to channel. We'll do a solid composite of a black layer. But instead of setting it to normal, set it to none. And that will get rid of the weird soft gray edges. And then we just have this nice sprite. Then we add a curves adjustment. And that's looking good. Maybe add some color. Very nice. So now let's go ahead, unsolo that make it a 3D layer, 
also turn off accept lights. F4, let's add or screen mode it. So I do apologize for going a little bit fast. Still want to get to some other cool stuff in the video. So let's take the fractal noise. Let's put it in order down here and then push it back in Z space. Now we're running into an issue here where the fractal is intersecting with the ground layer. But there's a simple solution based on this design. That is to take the floor layer and set it to screen. And what that will do is basically allow that other layer to be seen through the ground. So let's disable our volume light for just a second while we set this up. What we want to do is maybe duplicate the fractal noise. Uh, or Actually, let's add a little bit of animation to it. So maybe some evolution. And a quick way to do that is alt click on the stopwatch, do time times uh, like 150. And that'll just create a little animated movement. And then let's duplicate the layer and let's scale this layer up a bit and maybe push it back. And we can play around with some of the settings. We can maybe tweak the evolution options, uh, give it a random seed even. And then you can do things like change the scale of the fractal so it's softer or whatever, so that's cool. And we'll duplicate it one more time and maybe make it really large, push it back even further. So the idea here is just to kind of create a soft wave of noise around the background and just have a little bit of depth. So we could bring this one a little closer. And we can also brighten it a bit because this will affect the volumetric light. So having some bright spots kind of helps. Now keep in mind if we go and turn our volume light back on, what is controlling that threshold is actually that curves adjustment. So we can turn it up higher and cut off some of those brighter values. And remember we can just switch it to normal to see it all by itself. We can switch it back to screen. And you know you can play with this. You can even add a little bit of a curve so that it has a nice fade between the really bright values and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that is pretty cool. Maybe we want to add a little bit more readability to this. And we can do that a couple of different ways. So because of the render order of some of these effects, we have to be very specific on how we do this. So let's take our title, duplicate it, control D, or edit, duplicate. And we'll move the title above the volumetric light. So we'll make the volumetric light, say, blue. And our title's now on top. So let's come over here to bevel alpha. And let's put that on our title. And again, hit AA and turn off accept lights. And we can kind of see now we have this nice effect. Let's turn cast shadows off as well, only off. And maybe we can make the title black. Let's double click and then just change this to black. The other cool thing is that we can change the text. We can double click on it and it will automatically update in the other comp. So it's kind of a cool trick. So we've got our bevel alpha here. We can kind of turn up the edge uh, intensity here and you can see this nice edge. Then we're going to set the transfer mode of this to screen and that way we're only really adding that little bit of an edge and we can maybe move it up to the top here and that'll just help the title kind of pop out a little bit more uh, from the background. All right, so I changed the font and uh, it's looking pretty good. Let's go back to half res. Now, the other thing we can do here is make our title a little more 3D. So let's just duplicate that control D and hit AA, turn cast shadows off and maybe add the bevel alpha to this layer and let's see here, maybe just push it in Z space just so it fills up a little bit more and maybe, and let's also make sure except lights is off as well. And that way we can see our bevel alpha effect. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's go and add another adjustment layer on top of everything. And for this one, we can just do another curves adjustment. This way we can give a nice blue cast over everything. All right, so that looks really cool. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that a big part of this effect is the light source. So back here, we have a single light source, but 
we can actually do things like move it around. We can size it down. We can even get rid of it and just use the fractal noise as the light source. So if we brighten this or scale this up, we could just use that as the light source. Um, I think it looks cool with a point source. So we could turn that on, maybe duplicate it, slide a copy over here, maybe another one over here. Maybe even just move these down a bit. And that really starts to add a lot to the design. Now, you can also change the color of this light source and it will actually affect the color of the light. So like in this example with the phone, you can actually see, let's see here, that the screen is actually generating the color of the volumetric light. So you can really kind of see there's some different, uh, different color rays here. We have uh, some blue, but then we also have some green and uh, yellow here. So you can really do some fun different stuff with this effect. And I guess the other big thing is that the light sources don't necessarily have to be a circle. So you can maybe take, uh, you know, take one of them. Let's see here. Zoom in, maybe scale it up a bit. And let's say we take the pen tool. There we go. All right. Looks like uh, Batman has been uh, drinking a little bit, but uh, all in all, I think this works. Let's set that mask to subtract. Nice. And maybe scale it down a bit. And look at that. It's one terrible looking Batman logo. Um, I should have prepared that. Uh, maybe that would have looked a little bit better. Oh well, I already got the hits for this video, so at this point I can pretty much talk about whatever I want. Alright, so this is the basic idea of this effect. But let me just show you quickly how you might do this effect with some live action footage. So now you might take a look at this and say, that looks really pretty, you know, the light coming in. But actually, if you wake up and see this, it means you've just survived a nuclear explosion and uh, this is not a good sign. But it looks great. And also great for wedding videos. Nuclear explosions, weddings, fantastic. Okay, now inside of After Effects CS6 and CC, we have the tracker. So this is a 3D effect. So what we're gonna do is track the camera. So this track camera effect is gonna pop up here and it's gonna start analyzing. Now I've already done this once, so I've got all these points. And what we're gonna do is with the effect selected, we're gonna click on the wall and we wanna click on a surface that's flat. So these three points creates a nice flat surface. Right click, and we're gonna create a knoll and a camera. So now we have a camera from this. We'll go to half resolution again. And there's that 3D point perfectly in 3D space. So to create the volume light effect, I'm gonna run through it one more time quickly. We're gonna create a new adjustment layer. We'll type in uh, radial fast blur. And let's also add a tint effect along with a curves adjustment. And we'll put the curves after the tint. So tint, curves, and let's crush this down so we just see those highlights. There we go. And then we can take our radial fast blur amount and crank it up. Now here's the tricky part. So what we're going to do is set the transfer mode to screen. And we have some of the light coming through. We could animate this point and that would be fine. But I actually want to tie this to this track point that we just created. So here's how we do it. We alt click on the center, bring up the pick whip, select that layer. So let's see the track point layer. And we're going to type dot to comp 0, 0, 0 bracket. So that punches in that expression. So now, wherever we move this, so let's scale it up so we can see it. Wherever we move this is the direction the light will be coming from. So if we look at the animation now, we can kind of see it looks more volumetric. Here, let's add some contrast to this. So let's do like a... Maybe... Actually, I want to add some red, blue down. 
want this to be like extremely, extremely radioactive. Okay, so let's see here. Very nice. And depending on where we move that point, the light will stay connected. And we can actually push this thing further into Z space so that it's so far away that we get this really nice kind of volume effect. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out the website, videocopilot.net. Follow us on Twitter. I'm Andrew Kramer. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.